You know, that's nonsense. Hey, with us now for the political roundtable, GQ Washington correspondent Anna Marie Cox. She's here with the latest issue of the D.C. Power List this month. The magazine looks at the most powerful Democrats in the House, and this is a list, Anna, that was put together just to make Jack Welch mad. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> did you know Jack was going to be here? I did not know Jack was going to be here, but this uh, make, huh? this list okay. could make a lot of people mad. I thought you were going to say this is a list you could have put together, you know, three or four years ago as well. No, no, no. <laughs> it, not... Jack is enraged right now. Not oh. number five. So let's start with an easy one. Number Five, Chris Van Hollen, a good guy. He has a D triple C. Yeah. Why, why is he powerful? Well, he controls the purse strings for the national fund of money that gets doled out. And as someone said, like they like to pretend that everyone's going to get something. You know, everyone's yeah. going to get the same amount, or everyone's going to be distributed justly. It just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Uh, number four. Now we get to the fun part. Four, three, two, and one. Uh, sure to make Jack angry. Number four, <laughs> Barney Frank. <laughs> Barney Frank. I have to say, everyone I talked to, and I did. This is. I want to make clear. I did actually talk to a bunch of representatives for this. Um, they're surprisingly easy to get on the phone. Um, actually. Jack, really? I, I would say. Um, there was, well, they're like ants. There's you know hundreds of them. So. Hundreds of them. <laughs> um, yeah, not going to be as easy for you to get them on the phone next time no. after calling them ants. But anyway. <laughs> well, probably number, not. Number four, Barney Frank. He he combines the three kinds of power you can have in the House. Um, institutional power, um, you know, his experience there, his longevity there. Um, he's also just very smart, which I had no idea that that's something that counted in Congress. But I didn't either. Um, apparently it does. When you're working at actual legislation, the people who know what they're doing wind up that writing that legislation. That explains my problem. No, he is, he is. He is really Jack, smart. Uh, Matt, you know this guy from Massachusetts. And he's a real smart guy. Oftentimes you don't agree with him. You don't agree with him on Fannie and Freddie. But in general, uh, this is one smart guy. Everyone agrees on that, um, but even the Democrats don't necessarily like working with him. But, um, uh, uh, why is that? Just ordinary guy to work with? He's a little erratic, which is another form of power in the House. If you're erratic enough, people, you have a kind of power because people need to watch out for you. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like being a bad driver. It's like being a bad yeah. driver. Huh. It's like Dizzy Dean used to say. Yeah. It's always good Where if the bad thinks that's you're a little why. crazy. That's right. And Number then, three, George Miller. George, a, a friend of mine from California. We work together, but he is known as, quote, the puppet master. Why? The puppet master because he's the power behind the power. Um, a Republican leader called him Speaker Pelosi's Wiley Consigliere, which I loved. Huh. Um, and then also, uh, sort of less kindly, the shadow Nancy. He's never seen a union he doesn't love. That's true as well. But um, they're very close. They, they've, like, swapped staff back and forth. And people say they want them to go. Uh, if you want to know how it's going to fly with Nancy, ask George. You go to George. That's yeah. fascinating. Uh, number two, uh, our friend from Lizard's oh, Thicket. Yes. <laughs> I Jim Clyburn, who right now mug. is sort of caught in this, I just feel sorry for him. He's well, still trying to explain what happened in the fine. South Carolina race. <laughs> Alvin Green is driving him okay. crazy. I say Green in 16. <laughs> it's all about green in 16. Now. Let's go Green. So uh, Jim Clyburn, number and two. So number he's two. powerful. He's powerful. But he actually probably should be mm. higher. He's technically third in line in the House leadership. Um, but the reason why Henry Waxman edged him out is Waxman he is the chair of a very, very powerful committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee, which we're going to be hearing a lot from. Right, so we have heard so a lot what's from. the base of Jim Clyburn's power? Because a lot of times you have whips that just follow exactly what the speaker tells them to do, and they're not that powerful. Well, he is very close to, he is very close to the speaker. Um, right. And also, he has a base of power with him. Um, he's a former leader of the Congressional Black Caucus, which is still a very powerful constituency to have. Well, it's a very powerful constituency. How many members of the, the Black Actually, Caucus do we know? Do you know? It would be like 37. <laughs> 37, I, maybe well, we'll I think we're nice 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 I'm going to look and see if I'm right. Okay, yeah, so check, check and see. And number one, God, Henry Wax. Wax. Now, this is Wax. the one that may just, it just may make uh, make Jack pass out. Oh, Why well, is Henry Jack? Wax for well, number one? You wouldn't disagree with me, would you, Jack? No, I wouldn't. He, he was able to edge out John Dingell, who was, one, who was the most popular. That's the backstory on this, is that he should not have the committee chairmanship that he has. Um, he impressed a lot of people and pissed off a lot of people yeah. um, by, by gr grabbing it from, from Dingell. But, and that shows that he has a kind of power that's independent of the House leadership, actually, which is what sort of makes him kind of, to me, at least. What do you think? So, so Jack, what, what, what do I think? you're going to write a check to Waxman since he's so powerful? No, I'm going to miss this one. I'm going to pass on this one. You're going to sit this one out? He had a lot of uh, complaints with us at NBC over the uh, election of Al, uh, the Al Gore Bush mm -hmm. election. And he tell, held hearings and uh, he uh, accused me of influencing the election. Andy Lack, who was the head of NBC News now oh, for yes. a hearing. Really? Oh, yeah. So he created a lot of stir over that, although we, we didn't have anything to do with it. Who yeah. called what? Right. The guy will have a hearing at the drop of a hat. Yeah. I mean, he will hold a hearing at the drop of a hat. He like, does. when you drop the hat, he will <laughs> he he will hold the hat. Hold it. 
he will be here. And, and actually, I um, asked a friend in the White House. Um, well, I actually said to a friend in the White House, hey, you know what? If you guys lose, mm -hmm. um, if you lose the House, it's not going to be that bad for you. And he said, well, you know, look what Waxman does with the power of the subpoena. I don't want a Republican to have the power of the that's subpoena true. in the House. So that really is, that makes Waxman so powerful. That's now, obviously underlying this entire story is the fact that Nancy Pelosi is really one of the most powerful speakers in the history of the institution, right? That's true. And even the Republicans I talked to, I actually had to make a decision to not include the two most powerful, the two most senior Democrat leadership, um, because it's, it's just their power is just overwhelming. They, she would take up all five positions on the list. <laughs> she I really mean, is one of yeah. the most powerful. And, and, and the Republicans respect her for it. Um, right. Actually, uh, one uh, Republican said, you know, um, she, may, she, she may be marching them into a propeller blade, but she sure is marching them, you know, fast and quick into that propeller blade. Yeah. Wow. So. Anna Marie Cox, thank you. Next, Thank the you. new poor. The New York Times us. looks at how.